Good morning, everyone. This is Lola. I am going to share sunflowers with you today, but I gotta get everything set up here. This is uh, another beautiful day. Boy, I'm in denial. School is starting back up next week. Actually, they started today, um, the teachers, and I don't go until Monday. And I'm just like, I'm refusing to accept the fact that I've got to go back to school. But that's okay. It'll be fine. All right. I'm watching for the video to pop up on my iPad. Looking forward. And it is a great, great day because our friend Jen Gill is heading home today from the hospital. We are so excited in this area that we know she's on her way. I know she's going to be scared thinking about, you know, we've been at the hospital all this time. And um, Jen found out, oh, gosh, uh, I, I want to say about the 21st or the 20th of May, she was put on a heart transplant list. And we are, there it is, there it is. We are, um, all summer long, they have been in and out at, she's been in the hospital, she's not been around her family, other than her, they just come up and visit occasionally. And it has been a long, long summer for her. And they are heading home today, and this area, everybody is ecstatic to know that she's she's finally getting to come home. Matt posted yesterday that it was the last time yesterday he was driving across the state by himself. Today he will be driving across the state with Jen in the vehicle with him. And he wished to thank everyone from the bottom of his old heart and the bottom of Jen's new one for all the prayers and things. So it's been a emotional, emotional time too. So anyhow, we are gonna do the sunflower. I have a group of gals and I'm looking for comments here, trying to wait to see if it's in anybody's news feed yet. Um, we are in, I have a stamp and sip group and they, there it is, there's my hand, so looking to see. Um, I have a couple of stamp and sip groups and they like to do different things. They're not, not all cards. Some people like cards, but a lot of them don't do cards, but they love to do home decor pieces and samplers and projects for like Christmas gifts and uh, just all sorts of things. So, um, I'm looking here, but I'm, I'm not getting it to move. So anyhow, um, this is a piece that we did. We did last year, I did a five by seven, and this is a five by seven frame. They all have their five by seven frames. And I did a picture insert that I designed for each of the seasons. We did um, blue hydrangeas, we had tulips. We had the, the cardinals for the winter. The cardinals is stunning. And um, the fall, we did a beautiful cluster. There was a stamp um, set that they did. I'm gonna have to close this out here on my iPad and see if I can start it back up again. Um, they had a cluster, a beautiful cluster of flowers on the, um, in one of the stamp sets last fall, like a, a bouquet, and it was beautiful. So um, that's what we used for the fall. And then they enjoyed it so much, we went on ahead and we did, we did, um, well, I'm not getting your comments to pull up, guys. I can't get anything here to show on my iPad, so I'm not sure what's going on. So I'm just gonna go on ahead and I'm gonna demonstrate and then I'll go back and read comments and, and things later to you. But I gotta be able to see where I'm at here, all right? So um, they enjoyed it so much, they asked if we could do a few more different 
different months, so it's just not restricted to seasons. So this is one that we did, and I based it on a card that I, I received. My upline Pam and I went down to Jeff City to a, a couple of friends that we, we stamp with occasionally, and we had a little private sh uh, swap. And they, um, one of the gals, Lynn Williams, good friend of ours, Lynn Williams, um, had this card. It was a, um, a slimline card. And she had done it, and it had a portion of the flowers showing. And you had to cut the other ends off. It was like, oh, hated to cut them off after all the work. But anyhow, um, it was a beautiful card. And I came back and I said, I'm using this for my stamp and sip. And I said, should I, I'll give you credit for it, Lynn. And she said, well, actually, you probably need to give credit to somebody else too, because I stole it from her too. So that's just the way it is. You know, it's not steel, it's called casing. Copy and, copy and, um, I don't remember, C-A-S-E. Anyhow, you cased it. So, okay, I give up on the comments. So I'm just gonna go on ahead. I have already done a bunch of the coloring. I am going to leave this big piece of sunflower. I'm gonna show you what I did with the daisy. And I'm gonna show you the leaf and one piece of green twigs. That's it, everything else is already prepared to cut and put together. So this ought to go pretty fast, all right? So let me move this off to this side. These are the pieces that we're gonna work with. And the color combos that I'm gonna use are the um, uh, Mossy Meadow Blends. Let me pull this down a little more now that we got that out of the way. We'll pull it down so you can see the coloring. Uh, Mossy Meadow Blends, both the light and the dark. Um, I use the light old olive. I use the dark daffodil delight. I use the dark pumpkin pie, the light crumb cake. And then I also use the um, soft suede and light suede, dark and, dark and light soft suede. But I have loaned those to someone and I don't have another set. I have three sets and they're all out. So I am going to have to switch it off. So I'm gonna use bronze. Sometimes when I want a darker brown, even sometimes darker than soft suede, I will use bronze. Um, so I'm just gonna play today. We'll see what I end up with. Um, I like to mix paints when I was a painter. I used, I used a lot of times I would mix my paints to the color combo that I wanted. So we're just gonna kind of paint and mix blends right and left. So, so this is what we're doing. And I use this, this is all in the new catalog. This is a returning stamp set with the, the sunflowers. And all of the pieces, like the green pieces are from the sunflower dyes. I'm going to use one big sunflower. You're going to need two of the little sunflower um, with the two leaves that are in the set. You will need four of the littlest leaf. I see four, but I only see three there and I know I colored four. Oh, it's there. Okay. So I use four leaves, two of these sunflowers, one big one, two big leaves. And then in the, the um, framelets, there is a cluster of sprigs where there's two of them combined in one die cut. And then there are two individual ones. So I cut two of the individual ones, the single, and one double. Then I also used two, two uh, bumblebee, and I'm gonna turn on a light real fast. Two 
two bumblebee. And these are the medium daisy punch that's in the catalog. You're gonna want six white punches. And then I also used, from my retired punches, I used three bumblebee half inch punches, circle punches, and one soft suede. And that's my components for the flowers. And then we'll talk about the background piece here in a little bit. So let me push off this to the side and we're gonna go on ahead and get this going. And really, it's not a lot of coloring because I did all my prep work ahead for you as best I could. All right, so we're going to start with the daisy. And I want to take the soft daisy, the crumb cake. There we go. Finally got some messages there. Hi, Rhonda. Nice to have you with us today. So this, I'm taking this white daisy. And I'm going to take the light crumb cake. And I am not going to try to be even or anything else. I don't want this line drawn across where everything is up to this certain like quarter inch up. I'm just going to take my marker and I'm just going to zigzag some lines on the daisy. I'm not even worrying about the center because the center is going to be covered up. I, I went a little long on that one. That's okay. So I wanted something to give it a little more depth and dimension. So again, I'm just taking this and I'm just going up just like that. And I know that may look weird, but it won't when you turn around and you take another daisy and lay on top of it. And see how you like that une uneven edge? You don't want it to be just perfectly even. Good morning, Tracy. And then I will take a yellow circle. And to be truthful, I already prepped these ahead of time. I kind of marked them up a little bit with just scribbled across them with the light crumb cake. And then I ran it through the um, Tasteful Textures. And that will be the center I just marked on one side and you can't even see it. See how fast it dries? I think that's the side, okay? So we'll get to those in a little bit again. But that was all six of the white. I'm gonna do the very same thing with the bumblebee. And it'll look a little darker, but again, it will dry even softer and it won't be nearly as noticeable. Okay, that one's really not noticeable noticeable because I skipped it. I'm going to do one and I'm going to do both of them. I don't know if you like to use the blend. Some people don't like to color at all. Others enjoy it. Um, I wasn't sure that I would want to do much with them but I really do enjoy the blends I think it comes back to the old painting that I used to do all the years of, of painting the toll painting classes I taught and all of the ornaments I've painted over the years okay so there's the daisies except for being put together the daisies are done so now let's take the leaf and we're gonna start with the light Mossy Meadow Leaf. Oh, I'm sorry, Rhonda, that you're just so-so today. Not a good day for you. I hope it gets better. I'm just going to take the light Mossy Meadow, keeping that jagged edge, and I'm just kind of coming up and curving, following the center vein of the leaf. And I'm going to do both sides, just kind of jagged, staying towards the center. Some people work, they, they are so conscious of trying to keep it in here that they try to just keep everything the same length. Don't do that. You just want to, you just want to scribble some in there. Okay. All right. Then you take the dark, dark mossy meadow. 
and you're gonna go over the dark mossy meadow. You're just gonna put some streaks. You're not gonna try and touch every one of those dark lines that are put into the stamp. You're just gonna streak some. Some long, some short, just like that. And then I took the light old olive and I really want that leaf to have a lighter edge to it. So I stayed to the inside with those two darker colors and now I'm gonna come back in and fill in all of this. And as I do it, scribble back over that. Some people start with their light, then add the dark, and then go back. I, I don't, I start with the dark. I start with the dark, then I add the light, and I work my dark into the light, and I blend it as I go. And that goes back to the painting again, too. Lord have mercy. So I, my husband and I did a lot of craft shows. I painted ornaments and I, Lord, I, I have a tree that is so loaded you can't even see the damn, sorry, you can't even see the tree with the leaf because the ornaments are all over it. Sorry about that, I shouldn't have cussed. So anyhow, there's the leaf. Now we're gonna do the, the sunflower. This is the one that I purposely left for you to do and it takes a little bit of work. So I'm just gonna have to talk and hope I don't cuss as I do this. So Tracy, I hope you're good today. Did you go to the lake this weekend? So I'm gonna take the light crumb cake and it's kind of different. Most people wouldn't think about this combination, but I told you I like to mix and, and blend. So I took the light crumb cake and I'm gonna go over this. And it helped, I had um, I had Lynn's card to kind of give me some direction and color, what I wanted it to be. And I just kind of kept working through here. And every place where those leaves or petals overlap on top of another one, I'm going to darken where the overlap is or down here at the bottom where these lines are, where they come into the seed head. We have, I don't know about Rhonda about where you're at, but around here, our conservation department will put out a pile of um, acres of sunflower seeds. They'll plant them for dove hunting. And um, people go and have their pictures taken in fields with the sunflowers and uh, it's just, it's beautiful. But they are only, they don't, they're not as pretty as you think for a long amount of time. You gotta catch them just right. Tracy, you need to get your kids up there. Oh, <laughs> I, Rhonda says I'm her kind of gal, I guess because I cussed. <laughs> I did that one time in a, in a classroom. I was in high school choir. I, I'm a former music teacher. And I, uh, I got put in high school choir and I had, they had an opening and they came to me and said, Lola, we, we really need you to please go and help with the choir. And what that really means is we're gonna put you out there and help with the choir and we want you to do it gracefully and say yes. You know, that's the way it always works with, and that's okay. And it was, uh, it, it had its moments, it had its moments, but I had had everybody as an elementary music teacher, I'd had them all except for the seniors who thought they were gonna rule the roost. And I'm talking cause you know, I got a lot of coloring here. Anyhow, one, about, it was probably bad October. We had been going to town cause I remember very well, this is the year of 9-11. This is the class that I was in when we heard about 9-11. And uh, one of the boys, about three of them, had been giving me fits. They really didn't care for me. They didn't want to be there anyway. I mean, let's face it, senior boys, high school choir, most of them don't want to be there. They're there for the fine arts crib. 
credit. Anyhow, I, I didn't care. I was I wasn't gonna take anything from him. And one of them, I finally said, "You're done. You're out. Head to the office. You're done." And one of his friends turned to the other one and said, "She's like the wife of Satan." And I said, yes, I am. So you get the hell out of my classroom, too. And then I thought, oh, I probably shouldn't have said that. But anyhow, the third one didn't say a word. He shut up, never said a word after that. Now, see, doesn't that already look better? Look how that already made that thing just pop with having shadow in it. And uh, so now I'm going to take the dark pumpkin pie. I like this tip. A lot of people... They love this tip. I, and then they sit there and they push on it. And before you know it, guess what? That tip is not going to be there anymore. So if you want that tip, you got to stay on the tip at that point. Um, I prefer this one. And I'm going to go right back over that dark crumb cake. Same spot. So we're going around again. Anyhow, the third boy... Never said another word. John was real quiet the rest of the class. And he left and he went down to his next class, who, by the way, is his next teacher happened to be a former student of mine, too. And he said, you know what? I like that Mrs. Rist. She can cuss. She's normal. And that was the end of my senior boys. Ever, never had another problem. So on occasion, a cuss word can come in handy. And to this day, I, I, I will tell you that years later, I had the sons of those two boys that I kicked out of choir. And I told them, I, I, told, I told Blaine, I said, Blaine, I'm really sorry I kicked you out of choir. He said, no, Mr. Rest, I need to be kicked out of choir. He said, you did the right thing. And I, I said, Stuart. I'm really sorry I kicked you out of choir. And he said, I'm, I know. And he said, I I deserved it. But he said, Mrs. Riz, I really didn't call you the wife of Satan. I said, yes, you did. Don't lie. <laughs> okay. So, anyhow. But we, we did end on a good note. And both of them had the best little kids. Oh, my gosh. This senioritis. It happens. It happens. So, Okay. Now you're thinking, how is this going to be a sunflower with crumb cake and dark pumpkin pie? But I'll get there. And we're not too far from being done. It helps when you can color ahead and prep ahead for people so that they don't have to sit through a project like this all the way through. All right. So we keep going here. We had a lot of good comments and responses yesterday on the, the card that we did. I did here. Lots. And while I'm thinking about it, girls, I, I am not planning again to do tonight uh, stamping with Pam. We are not with Jen coming home. I know that I can't be around a lot of people because of Jim's surgery too next week. But... Um, I do want to at least drive over and see the community welcome her back from a distance. So there's my sunflower. Still not done. Now I'm going to take the dark daffodil delight. And now I fill it in. And as I fill it in, I'm going to come back over this pumpkin pie and crumb cake and kind of blend it out. And it's not nearly as orangey looking. And it also shows the petals having more character to them, more definition of, it just looks more dimensional. Okay, and I will make this fairly fast. So Rhonda Tracy is in one of my Stampin' Sips groups. She has 
has been a team member too. And we have a lot of fun. I wish you guys were closer, you and Kathy, and were able to come up here and do a few things with us. Um, so here, I just keep going. Not a lot of people, you know, not everybody enjoys coloring. So they would not enjoy this project. But there's just something about when you can do a, a home decor piece. Hi, Bev Dittmer. Nice to see you on with me today. We did our cards yesterday at church. Bev was there, and that went really fast, didn't it, Bev? Really fast, our card ministry. So, Bev, I don't know if you like to do much coloring or not. I don't know. Pam, I know, does color some with her blends in her stamp group. And I know you're in her stamp group, so... I have to watch it. Um, Fiona loves these blends too. And it, really, my girls, my granddaughters, they share my craft room with me. They have a, I have a trundle day bed in there with them. And when they're not here, it is loaded with Stampin' Up! projects. And when they are here, are coming, I have a walk-in closet. And within 15 minutes, I can have all of my stuff that I think might be a little bit interesting pushed into my walk-in closet door closed ready for two little girls and uh, so it doesn't take much but almost done too but she uh, I didn't think about it and she crawled up on my tall work table. I have a, a work table that has a counter height on it and she crawled up into my bar stools and pretty soon she came out with a little magenta, that magenta madness marker, which is kind of ironic because that's the one that does not appeal to me. She comes out and says, Nana, I want a color. And I'm like, oh, you know, we'll color with something else besides those. And I'm still finding little spots in my room where I've got some magenta showing on a door frame and she colored a little splotch on my work top and yeah. So the blends now go way back so she can't reach them because it's a like a almost a almost a four foot table in width. Okay, so there's the sunflower. Isn't that pretty now? Okay. Hi, Trisha Snell. Nice to have you with us. V, you should be in school today. Maybe not. Maybe you don't have to be there yet. All right. Now, we got a problem because I loaned out my, I loaned out my um, soft suede. And I got to color this. And they don't have an early espresso, which I don't understand. We need an early espresso. I will use the bronze, and that kind of gives you a, you, it's confusing because, you know, you think bronze, you think, okay, that's metallic. There is nothing metallic about that. So there's no shimmer or anything. So I'm going to take the bronze, and I'm just going to put dots all around on the outside of the sunflower. So, Trisha, I told Dave I wouldn't be in today, that we're, we're kind of hanging low here somewhat for Jim's surgery. And in the process, I told him I even canceled my house cleaner and we'll have to clean house. So that's, I'm going to be doing that. That's true love with a taste of bitchiness on the side because I hate to clean house. But I will do it for my husband. So... Dave's my principal, and he, he knows me well enough. He's heard me cuss, too. All right, so I just kind of dotted in here. Just dot, 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 okay? Now, 
I'm going to come back and I'm going to take the dark because I got to play. I just got to play. So I'm just going to take some dark crumb cake and kind of dot in here too. And I may have to, when I get my soft suede back, I may have to try and doctor it up after I put it together. And Okay. All right. So now I'm going to take this dark cinnamon cider, which is not dark enough, but I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to fill in now. And when I fill in here, you want to make sure... Oh, I know, Rhonda. It, it takes time to do it. You know, though, in a group setting, with them sitting and talking, they they can sit here and do this, and they enjoy that and can sit and visit at the same time. So it's not too bad. And I'm just going to fill in. And as I do it, I want to make sure I go all the way up to that crumb cake and pumpkin pie in the petals because I don't want any of that black lines to show because if it does, it gives you a, like right here. I don't know if you can see, but I left this spot without any any color on it and it looks like it's just ink. I'm pulling back my pen so you can see it. Now I'm gonna go back over it and it doesn't look nearly. It's not too bad. All right, I'm going to go back in, though, and give it some more dark right along the edge. And we are ready to put it together, so Rhonda, don't give up on me. Just darkens that down just a hair around there and just some more in here, and we're done. Tracy, are you at work today? Because I've got... A delivery for you maybe today or tomorrow okay all right so there it is there's the sunflower so now we're gonna put it all together so Rhonda stick around this part you can do okay we're gonna start with a five by seven piece of white paper you gotta have something to put this on and I'm going to take mmm I think that's probably about one and three-fourths and this is the black paper that is in the Hostess set at the back. There is a Hostess set of DSP that's like 48 pieces. And one side is just okay. The other side is all black and white patterns, and I love it. And I'm going to put that here at the bottom. If I'm off a little bit, it's okay because... You know, there's a little edge and there's a little edge, but your frame is going to be hold it, hiding now. All right, and I'm going to do another, the same thing, same measurement. I think, again, it was about one and three-fourths, and I'm going to put that at the top here. Okay. Now I'm gonna take a piece. Oh, I do have a measurement here, just a minute. This one here is four inches, and it's five and a half inches wide. Okay, so I said this was for a five, and, five by seven, but this is actually five and a half by seven because I wanted to make sure I got the, the width this way. The, the length was going to be fine, but I needed to have a little extra. And I'm going to take this, and I textured it with that um, Tasteful Texture die. And then I have two pieces of strips, and this is from the Peony set. This is a die piece. And I know you can't see it in the picture, but there is actually an edge where the edge of the framelit was that has cut into my black, and that's going to be my taping line. So I'm going to take this and turn it over and run some adhesive on the back, and I'm going to set this piece right on that line so I'm adhering it to the back side of my piece, okay? And then I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna cut this down. 
and cut that edge off. And then I have another one to do on the bottom. And it's already got the tape, so I'm gonna lay this on here again on that same line. Come along, and I'm gonna cut it off. Now, take your adhesive and run it on those pieces all around again. And that's gonna go right here in the middle. And try to, you know, I, I eyeball, I'm sorry. I'm not gonna measure that. But I think that's fairly close. Okay? All right, now we're going back up. So here I go, I'm gonna raise you back up here. Now, it will be easiest if you put this to finish it and put it together, and it will go relatively fast. Oh, I forgot to color one thing. I'm gonna take this out. I'm gonna leave my mat in there. And I just buy, I buy frames when I get them um, at Michael's. I can find them sometimes fairly cheap. This one was a $5 frame and we have, we have made a lot of use out of this because we have multiple, multiple home decor pieces and literally just change them out. Okay. All right, I want it to be centered as best I can in here. And if you don't put it in the frame, you're going to have some of the daisy or sunflowers or daisies sticking off the edge. And I want it, I want it kept in the middle. We got to color one more thing and then we're done. We're going to take this little piece of paper here, this little sprig of greenery. I always have to put something under your blend because it will bleed through. And I'm gonna take, this is cut out of pear pizzazz. And I wanna keep the lightness of the pear pizzazz as best as I can. But I'm gonna go over it with dark mossy meadow. And I'm just gonna touch in places in the center. I'm not gonna try to get straight edges. The light, the lighter coloring will be still the paper showing on the outside, like so. Okay. A little here. And that's how I colored it. And then it will dry a little bit lighter and there's the other two pieces, okay? So now let's assemble. And I'm not the best at assembling this stuff. Some people can work with flowers and they do a wonderful job and I, it's really not easy for me. So I'm gonna take the sunflower and I'm gonna build it up with some dimensionals on the back side. Give me 10 minutes and we'll have this put together. Okay. I got a cut because I got some damage spots here. So when I was lifting that up, it was pulling all the paper off the dimensional. So I'm going to put a piece of dimensional and I'm gonna to stay towards the middle of the flower because I wanna be able to tuck stuff under the flower edge and if I get dimensionals to the outside edge, you're not gonna get anything tucked underneath it, okay? 
Now, after I did that, guess what? We're gonna tuck it, another layer on top of it. We're gonna put another piece of dimensional on top of those to build it up so it's, it's like double up. As Gina says, lifters. She calls them my, our lifters. Okay, couple more. And we're gonna put that right in the middle. A somewhat centered in the middle. I'm not gonna be perfect about it. And I like this portion with the flowers. I like that to be on the bottom part of it. Okay, all right, next. I'm gonna add in these sunflowers that I had already pre-colored. There's two of them. And I'm gonna put those in with flat adhesive. I'm not gonna put them on dimensional, so I'm just gonna adhere it with some dimensional or some adhesive and slide it under. And I'm gonna go on ahead and do the other one down here. Turning it a little bit so the leaves maybe are a little bit different angle. Now well, I was wanting to get it up there, but I'm not going to get it there. So I'm going to have to turn it here. Okay. And that's why you needed that, that um, sunflower with those dimensionals in the middle so everything can tuck under it. All right, next, we're going to go to the, to the daisies. So let's pull all that pile out here and let's get those put together. You're going to take a um, glue dot and you're going to put a glue dot on the back of one of the daisies and then you're going to um, overlap it on top of another daisy so the petals are not lining up perfect. Okay, let's do that. We'll have three full daisies of white and we will have one yellow brown-eyed Susan. So I'm very lucky. Um, my husband does not mind helping me like this. And so he will help me punch. So he punched all these daisies. So I have... 20 people between two Stampin' Sips and I needed six, seven, eight. So he punched 160, eight times 20, 160 daisies for me. I'm very lucky because those daisies are really not easy to punch. Okay, so there's the daisies. Now I'm going to take the centers. And remember, I kind of colored over them in a little place before I ran them through the, the, the um, machine, the embossing folder. But it didn't matter because we covered on, colored on top of one after it had already been embossed and it still was fine. So those are going on top of the daisies like so. It missed that one. And then the brown one is soft suede and it's going on top of the Bumblebee Black Eyed Susan. Okay, so now we're gonna put the daisies down. So I'm gonna put two of my daisies up at the top and I'm just gonna put some tape on the center and stick one underneath. And then I'm gonna go on ahead and take another white one and I'm gonna put a piece of dimensional on the back of it. So we have a little depth to it, a little dimension to it. And it's gonna overlap right here on top. Okay. And we're gonna do the same with the daisies down below. I'm gonna put the white one flat
slide it under here. Guys, this is this is not big thing. This is not rocket science or anything. It's just paper. So even if you don't like it, you're only going to have it out for a month and you can take it out and put something else in. But usually when we're done, they all like them. I need to move that up a little ways if I can get under that pedal. I want to move it up a little higher. Okay. And then I'm going to put a dimensional behind the sunflower. Like so. And then that leaves me leaves. I have two big leaves and I'm just going to slide a big leaf up here under the flowers, kind of overlapping it. And I'm going to put one down at the bottom. Sliding it in. Okay. I'm going to put these four little leaves. I'm going to put them on, some of them flat, some of them on dimension. I'm going to put one here on a dimensional. And I'm going to fill in with a leaf there. I'm going to put one flat over here on this side, on top, kind of overlapping the daisy. And another one here on a dimensional. Just about done. There. Lynn, when you watch this, I didn't do maybe exactly the same, but I thank you for that beautiful card swap that brought this on. Throw an extra one here. I had it. And I'm just going to throw it in here. And it's flat under that one. And that leaves these little four pieces here. Okay. So, because I don't have my acrylic pad with me, my silicone pad, I'm going to take this. And I'm going to turn it over, and I'm just going to slowly go over the end of the stems with tape. If you go fast, you're going to tear it off. So you go slow, you'll be okay. You could do it with glue dot, too, but I, I find that actually if I go slow, I have better control than trying to pull that off the glue with a glue dot on it. Okay. So I'm going to take the double one. It doesn't matter. You can put them either way. I'm going to take the double one and slide it under here. Okay. And these two little single ones, I'm going to put up here. If I can get them under here still. You may have to go at an angle or you may have to cut them off. It may be a little too long to get tucked under there. Okay, that's it except for one little splotch. We're gonna do one more thing. We have in the catalog there are little golden bumblebees. And we're gonna take one of the golden bumblebees. And I don't know where I'm gonna put it. I could put it on the big sunflower. I could put it on the daisy. Right now I have it on a daisy. I think I'm just gonna set it right there on that daisy. And I'm gonna use a glue dot. Like 
this. And I'm just going to put it on there. And there it is. Guys, there's our framed piece. This is what my Stampin' Sip girls did. It's a, um, they do a $25 order. And a minimum $25. And they get the kit. Um, they, I can't send it with them. They have to do it here at the house because I cannot send any stamped images. But we were able to run all of this ahead of time. And then I had it set up on my Stamparatus. So all they had to do was insert these shapes into a template on my Stamparatus, ink it up, stamp it, and go back and start coloring on it. And it worked out really, really nicely. And that's my, my piece. So um, I hope to be back, maybe not tomorrow, but in a couple of days, I hope to be back. And um, again, there will not be a video tonight of, of Facebook Live with Pam and I on our creative page that we do. Um, and if you are interested, please push or click on like or follow so that you see all the notifications of when I come on live. Also, um, I try, I'm in the process of working on my website and getting, getting my, I just do, I learn best by rep repetitive. So I, I would do a lot of repetition, trying to make sure I've got all my links going. So my website is lolaris.com and you will see more information on that. And thank you, Rhonda. I'm glad you liked it. How sweet, I appreciate that. So anyhow, that's my piece. So take care, have a great day and God bless. Bye-bye.